Hi everybody, how's it going? It's Brian for thetechmob.net and today I'll be doing a comparison video between the HP touchpad, the Wi-Fi only 16 gigabyte model and the iPad 2, also the Wi-Fi only 16 gigabyte model. So both of these devices just came off of a fresh boot so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick test to see how long it takes for them to shut down. So the power button are located on each device in the same area in the upper right corner of the device. Now I do still have the plastic on the touchpad because I do plan on putting this back in the box because I'm gonna put, go ahead and put it on eBay. So let's go ahead and do this. So when iOS shuts down it usually shows the spinning wheel and then the device itself shuts off. So the touchpad is already off. Wait, no, it's still powering down. There is something over here on the screen. The iPad is still turning off and the HP touchpad has shut down itself first. Now usually the iPad doesn't take this long to uh, turn off, so there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this light off and close the blinds so it's so there's a little less glare. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn both devices on. So three, two, one. So the logo shows up quicker on the iPad. It takes a little bit longer on the touchpad. So both devices are now turning on. This is a much better orientation for this test. So I'll just leave things like this. Now with my initial use of WebOS, it's a very slow performing operating system and you can see how fast the iPad is in turning on. Much faster than any other iOS device out there, it's faster than most Android tablets and it's by far faster than the HP touchpad. So touchpad is still shutting or turning itself on so just gotta wait for it to turn itself on before we can move on. So the touchpad has finally turned on. So let's go ahead and start opening up some applications. I'm not gonna go into the mail app application because there's some private stuff in there, but I will go into the calendar one. So it seems that they may be pretty even here. The iPad, the transition to open the app is a lot shorter than on the touchpad. So we'll just give that one to both of the devices. So next up, there's no notepad application over here. I'm not going to go into maps because I think it automatically picked my location. I don't need you guys to see where I live. Let's go ahead and open up the YouTube application. So on the iPad it's already done. It's already up to my subscriptions area and everything. And on the touchpad it's actually going to the browser website for YouTube instead of going into a dedicated application. So not good on their part because the touchpad does have flash and so does the iPad using iSwifter. Okay, let's go open up some more applications. Let's go into music. So the iPad just finished loading the music app. It automatically went to the song that I was last listening to and WebOS was a good bit far behind. Next up, let's go to, not gonna go into contacts. Let's go into Quick Office. I have Quick Office HD for the iPad over here, and there's also a version of Quick Office for WebOS, so let's go ahead and open them up. And the iPad version is already finished, and the WebOS version is still loading, so let's go ahead and wait, and there it goes. Very long time to open an application like that. Next up, let's go to. Let's go to the Photos app. So I don't really have anything on either devices. I have some screen captures on the, or some screenshots on the on the touchpad because to take screenshots, it's just the power button and your home button, just like on the iPad, as you can see there. So let's open that one up. iPad is already finished. Touchpad is still thinking about it. And there it goes. We could view the screenshot that it just took right there. 
Next up, let's go ahead. Now, Facebook does the same thing as YouTube, where I think it goes to the apps, the app catalog for the touchpad, and then it loads there. Uh, calendar and clock. Nope, that seems to be it. Um, let's go to. Well, I don't have Angry Birds on this, on the iPad, so I can't really go over there. But let's go into the browser and do some web browsing speed tests. See that the browser is already open, ready for me to go to a website. But first, let me go ahead and clear the cache on both devices before I begin. So settings over here. Uh, nothing regarding the browser, so I'm assuming that we do that within the browser itself. Let me clear everything on the iPad first. And over here we should be able to go to this menu, preferences. Clear bookmarks, clear history, clear the cookies, and the cache. So now we are ready to go. So let's go to a simple site such as Google. Three, two, one. Much faster on the iPad. Both devices are connected to the same wireless network. Now let's go to the mobile version of YouTube. Three, two, one. Now the touchpad was noticeably faster, but it doesn't load the full touchscreen version of the mobile version of the website. It goes over here, you can see that we have this little menu of stuff and we aren't able to get to that on the touchpad. So let's go to a website. Let's go to bgr.com because it's short to type. So three, two, one. So you can see that the iPad version was noticeably faster and the touchpad version just finished and there's some flash ads on the touchpad that there aren't on the um, that aren't on the iPad. So we can scroll all the way to the bottom of the web page without there being any sort of checkerboarding and you can see that there's actually like an, an inch and a half of white space on the right side. Not sure what that's about so scrolling all the way down, no sort of checkerboarding or uh, yeah, checkerboard on the uh, on, in the browser. Although there is some when going up. Not as much on the iPad when scrolling up. So let's go to Engadget. So three, two, one. So the iPad has a lot of the content already loaded on the screen. In fact, it's almost finished. The touchpad is catching up. Still not officially finished on either devices. The iPad just finished and the touchpad is still going. The blue progress bar isn't completely gone over yet. Uh, but for the most part, the, uh, um, the iPad is a much faster browsing experience. Sort of funny seeing this latest post on Engadget because I was able to pick that, the touchpad up for 100 bucks. Now let's go to our website over at the techmob.net. So three, two, one. Well, for some reason, okay, I misspelled it on the touchpad. I apologize for that, but I just tapped on the link in Google and you can see that it's still taking it just doesn't really matter what website you go to. It just seems that the touchpad is going to take longer. I will do, I'm going to go back and do some of the tests without flash enabled. That might be some of the issue, but you can see how slow it is when loading this website while on the iPad 2, it loaded much faster. 
So right now I'm gonna go ahead and do that test. So I'm gonna take the iPad, clear out its cache, cookies, and history. So the iPad is ready to go. And let me go ahead and close out of this, go back into it so the tab is gone. Well, actually, the browser on the touchpad doesn't even use tabs, so let's go into preferences, clear everything again. But this time we're going to disable flash and turn that off as well. So flash is enabled and or disabled. So right now we are ready to go. Let's go to Boy Genius Support again, just because it's quick to type. Uh, to type. Now I went ahead and gave the touchpad a little bit of a head start. So you can see that the iPad is already almost finished with loading the website. Uh, the touchpad is still having the issue on the right side of the screen, and the iPad just finished. Touchpad is still loading. And I'm just going to go ahead and push the stop button because there's no point in waiting for it to finish. Next up, let's go to Engadget. So three, two, one. iPad, once again, already has most of the content on the screen. It's almost finished and it's finished on the touchpad. It still has a long way to go. Very slow browsing experience on the touchpad. Let's go ahead and stop that one quickly again. Let's go to Google just to see how long it's going to take this time around. So three, two, one already there on the iPad. So let's go to one more website. Um, let's go to Gizmodo. So three, two, one. And as with pretty much every other website, the iPad has by a large margin has already finished ahead of the touchpad. So when it comes to web browsing on the touchpad, it just doesn't even come close to what we have on in iOS and probably not even Android either. So overall, the touchpad is a bit of a letdown in, in terms of performance, but most people already knew that or else HP wouldn't have been um, discontinuing all of their webOS development. So that was just a quick performance test comparing the Apple iPad to 16 gig Wi-Fi only running iOS 4.3.3, jailbroken, and the HP touchpad 16 gig running version 3. Point, um, it, this is version 3.0, let me just go to device info. 3.0.2.68. So I, I updated this earlier today and it took like two hours because it kept failing. It just had to keep doing it over again. So that's it with the video. I do plan on comparing the speed of the touchpad and an iPhone 4, 4.3.3 jailbroken, just for fun. And that's it with the video. So if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you could go ahead and leave them down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all very soon.